Welcome back everybody. I hope you familiarized yourself with all the different ways to capture items into your TickTick inbox. In this lesson, we're going to cover how to organize the system for GTD. As you can see, we have a couple of additional levels on the left hand side here. And we have a couple of new lists and folders in the middle. So let's go over exactly what that all means, starting with the lists that we've added to our system. With TickTick, you have the option to create three types of lists. One of those is a task list, which you can set up as a type. Another one is a note list, which will have non-completable items inside of it. And another one is folders, which can have both of those live inside of it. So what you'll want to do is create a task list called standalone items a task list called Reminders, a folder named Projects, a folder named Agendas, a folder named Not Now, a note list named Reference, a note list named Areas of Focus, a task list named Goals, a note list named Vision, and a note list named Purpose. So, zooming in on a few of these, Standalone items is a list where, as the name already implies, you can have tasks inside of them that aren't part of a project, that don't have additional tasks required to achieve the outcome. They are tasks on their own. Reminders are list items that you want to see at a very specific point in time. And the example here I've put is a museum reservation. So let's say you want to visit a museum at a certain day. You have a reservation, you got it via an email, you forwarded that email into TickTick, what you can then do is put that specific email as such into the reminders list and show up at a specific time. So let's say we will go to the museum on December 11th. On the right top here, we can add a reminder, which will make it show up right when we need to see it, including the description. In this case, let's say the reservation code or something. And once you've completed your visit to the museum, you will no longer need it. So you can just complete the item to make it disappear. For projects, we have two types of projects that I usually refer to. One of those is a parallel project. What this means is that every item can be completed in random order. An example here is a project that I've called Clean the House. Now let's assume that it doesn't matter which room you clean first. In this case, we can just have these three separate actions live inside of that list in no particular order. It doesn't matter which one we do first. However, let's take another example, which I've called in this case, let's say I want to obtain noise cancellation headphones. That's a project that has multiple tags associated with it as well. However, you could argue that some of those are more important than others to be completed first. For example, how can I purchase a headphone if I don't even know which one I want yet? So in this case, what you can do is actually use the board view. You can switch between those views at the right top side here. And it's called Kanban view in TickTick. And then you can use several sections here to group your items into these chronological sections. In this case, it's a research section, tryout and purchase with tasks associated with all of them. And the idea is not to go for any of these tasks before these are complete. Next up, we have agendas. In other words, talking points you may have for certain people that you meet regularly or specific meetings even. That's why I chose to use a folder approach here where you can actually kind of have three levels of nesting. The main folder is the agendas folder that we see here. Within that, we have a work list. And within that, we have a specific colleague task. So this is kind of a way to hack the system, because what if you have multiple talking points with that same colleague? Well, what you could do then is to add a subtask. So that's what you can do at the right bottom side upon selecting a particular item. And from there, you can just add talking points or specific question. And so this is a really neat way to organize your agendas. Now, another section, sorry, another list you may want to add is something like a family list where you have different family members as their standalone task items, you know, or friends, you name it. It's all up to you. 
what are the communities that you have in your life and how do you want to organize it. But one little drawback about TikTok is that it doesn't allow you to have sub-nested lists, which I would have gone with otherwise. But frankly, this just achieves the same outcome. Just think about it in a different way. Agendas first, community second, individuals third, via tasks and subtasks for the individual talking points that you have with them. Next up, we have the not now list, which is basically an incubation list, like a bucket list is also called. Let's say you have uh, recipes you want to cook. You can just all add those in here as standalone tasks, move them into an active project once you feel like they are ready to be performed now. And you can add several sublists into this folder by right clicking the folder, adding a list, and then naming it, etc. One thing that you've noticed here, what I really like to do is add an emoji to it. It just spices things up, makes things more fun to use, and in fact, more easy to understand. It just gives a visual cue about what this is, so you can select any kind of emoji from here in the list. Now, the drawback here is that you cannot actually search for an emoji, so it can be a bit cumbersome to select them at first if you have to scroll through the whole thing, but it's there nonetheless, which is great to have. We will go through the other list we've set up here in more detail in a later lesson. For now, let's actually go back to the very left-hand side here and move from the task level down to the calendar level. So this is an integration that TickTick offers, which in my opinion is very neat, because once you have items with a particular due date associated with them, they will also show up in this calendar view. Now, if you remember that museum reservation I was referring to earlier, it was already completed here, so it's a bit grayed out, so to speak. But we can also make it incomplete again right from the calendar view, and it will show up with more emphasis again. So it's a really nice way to organize tasks that may have due or start dates. And in fact, you can integrate your calendar, like a Google Calendar, with this as well. There's various options to arrange tasks in a particular way, as well as viewing more particular options which allow you to kind of filter through the calendar with more details. So they really thought this through and you can also work the other way around. So you can actually include your TikTok calendar into your Google calendar by subscribing to it if you wish to do so. So this is something I really like, although personally I wouldn't even use it that much, but it is good to see at a glance, perhaps during your weekly review when you're looking forward to the next week, hey, what are some of the items that really need my attention at a particular time of the week? Next up is an Eisenhower matrix. So what this is, in case you're not familiar with it, it's basically a quadrant where you can divide items into four categories. Urgent and important, not urgent, but still important, urgent, but unimportant, and not urgent and unimportant. So basically what you'll want to do is make sure most of your tasks, if you choose to work with this prioritization method, are in the not urgent and important sector. If it's urgent and important, then, well, you know what you need to do, but urgency always creates a sense of stress for me. So I prefer to reduce the number of urgent items as much as possible. This can be saying no to more things in my life, but it can also mean planning better, planning ahead, making sure everything's finished on time so they don't even reach the urgent status. However, on the flip side, if you're only doing not urgent and unimportant work, then you could argue you're mostly busy, but not really effective. So the sweet spot for me is really in the right top side here. And so it's really nice that you have a visual way of seeing how is my work distributed. Now, as you can see here, so far we haven't prioritized any of these items yet. So this is something we will do at a later point in time. Important to note is that not all of these are actually items to complete, right? A certain reference item, for example, is not any of these. They're not actionable. So what you can do here is actually select specific lists to only include those into the equation. Right? You can select and unselect them. So in this case, we only want to have lists that contain actions. In this case, that would be the standalone items list, clean the house, and obtain noise cancellation headphones. All of these others are not actionable. So now, 
when we save the view, we will see it change to only include tasks. And you can set up the same filters for all of these. I really recommend only having actionable tasks live inside of this section to get the most out of it. Later in a later lesson, when we process our items, we will also take a look at how we prioritize these and see how the Eisenhower matrix looks after that. Another cool section is the habit section. This enables you to basically organize your routines, but it can also be a way for you to get a vision on what are some new habits that I'm trying to implement. For the sake of simplicity though, I just added one in here for now, and I called it clean my inboxes. This is a habit that I want to perform every day. So what I've done here, and I can just do it again just to illustrate how to do it, is to set up a frequency for the habit. How often do you want to perform it? Daily, weekly, or another custom interval? And even if you do decide to go daily, you can still exclude days like the weekends, as you can see here, for example. Your goal can be to either achieve it all, in other words, just have a daily reminder for it, or to reach a certain amount. So you can really get very granular here. It's super specific, really helpful. So things like building a new habit, such as going to the gym, at some point, once it is a habit, you may not need to remind yourself on it any longer. So that could be a reason to have it more temporarily. Same goes for the goal days. So how many days do you want to achieve? To tell yourself, I've achieved this as a new habit. Sections are basically ways to organize these, just as we saw on the other lists already. So there is a, by default, like a morning section, afternoon, night. So in other words, time-based routines. But you can also set custom settings here. And when you save it, it will be added to the habit list and prompt you to look at it when you've set it up to do so. And over time, it will show you how many times if you checked in with this habit, in other words, have you completed it by marking it complete and showing you a streak as well. So really a good way to measure your progress on habits. Last up, always very important, there's a search functionality included as well which allows you to search for specific tasks, lists, or tags. So for example, let's search for headphones. We can see that the list shows up and we can navigate to it right away from the search function. So that is all really well done. Same is true for the mobile versions. They also have all these features included. And I really recommend you set up your system in this way because you will see in the next lesson when we actually process our items, how valuable that becomes. I hope you feel like your system is really coming together now. The organizing portion is really crucial for that. Setting up the right lists with the right taxonomies is very important. If you found yourself running into any issues, just post them in the comments and I'll be happy to help. If you are ready to move on to what I would argue is the most difficult, the most challenging lesson of all, then uh, if you dare, press next lesson and we'll walk you through step-by-step -step on how to process items from the inbox into the list that we've created here.